Does anyone have a question that they want to start off with? If not, we'll throw in some voluntary questions so we can start covering some uh, some different topics. The way we're going to do this is going to be really really interactive. I'm going to let you guys answer a lot of these questions instead of myself. Because I know a lot of you guys have more experience than others and others less than, than some. So does anyone have something that they've been thinking about, that they're curious about? It could be advertising, it could be procedures, it could be anything. How about you, Anna? Anything you, you, that you've been uh, concerned with or questions that you, um, you don't understand how people can actually figure well, out? Actually, I was going through something yesterday back and forth with an agent. Okay. Um, my client has a very, very tight budget. Um, there's really no properties on the market in her price range. Mm -hmm. Um, and she's not being picky, she's, she really knows um, her budget. Now, we actually found, you know, six months into it, we found something that's moving condition for her and her family. How do you get the agent and the seller to have some empathy to single mother, you know, that's trying to buy a house, see beyond the numbers? Okay, all right. So, if I understand your question correctly, you have a client that's looking with a very limited budget, right? And you're trying to get the sellers to kind of come down and price some to kind of help out. Well, they have other offers. Oh, they've got other offers. Okay, so it's not just you and them. There's a right. lot of offers. Okay. All right, does anyone here, uh, excluding Tom and myself, we can always chime in at the end. Have you guys ever experienced uh, having a client that has a limited budget and how do, how do you get their offer? Uh, looked at when you're kind of up against investors sometimes, right? That that happens, right? You, in that price range, you got investors making offers. Probably. Yeah, you got cash offers. You got all types of offers. Anybody want to give an idea? You don't have to be 100% right. Good. Um, it worked for me, and it worked for one of my clients. Mm -hmm. um, I try to get them approved by mm -hmm. underwriters. Yeah. Versus being pre-approved. Yeah. And actually close the deal. That's a great idea. Twice. Yeah. Showing up with a DU approval or even an approval or, or I'm sorry, even a commitment sometimes is just as good as cash because it means that like all that's missing is the asset. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a really great idea. So get the person uh, underwritten as far as they can minus the house. I don't uh, think the people are really ready. They just put it on the market four days ago. Mm -hmm. I don't think they're ready to move in and move out. Mm -hmm. um, they lived in the house for 41 years. So, they're so I don't think that time mm -hmm. matters to them. Matters to them. Mm -hmm. Um, it's probably you're probably trying to get the best offer. Mm -hmm. Anyone have another suggestion? I'm just trying to play on their emotional side that they raise their family Got there, it. and they give somebody else the same chance. Got it. Rather than mm -hmm. the numbers. Anyone? Well, Rock. I would, I would say think? that um, when you're presenting the offer, like sell the buyers, tell them that they're not going to be not going to nitpick, mm -hmm. that they just want to close fast, that this is. You said there's a, there's a single mom, right? Yeah. Single mom, tell her that it's the home for her, that fits her, you've been looking for months, <coughs> and that there's no other one for her, and it's possible one of the only ones. Okay. You're gonna sell the buyer to the seller. You have any suggestions, son? Uh, it's about what you said, sell the buyer first. Yeah. Sell the buyer first. Usually, though, I think when they just come on the market, all they're looking at is the number. Yep. All they're looking at is how much can I yeah, get for it. Yeah, I'm asking to look beyond care. the number, yeah. Yeah, well, it's in the first couple of weeks like that, I think it's, it's, it's hard to do because mom and pop are moving out. They've been there 40 years. They just want to know how much we can get out of here with. They don't care about the rest of it at this point, but in a few weeks, they might change a little bit, but always sell a buyer first, right? When I first started in real estate, things were totally different than they are now. And when Tom was practicing real estate, things were much different. When you had an offer, you had the ability to go and present the offer in person. You could do that and you can still do it now. But a lot of times the uh, listing agent is wasn't around for back then, so they're like, "What? You don't trust me? You want to go present your offer to the to the seller? I'll do that. Don't worry, send it over, fax it, email, do whatever you got to do. It's your it's your right to present it in person, and if it doesn't get presented in person, they have to give it to you in writing that the seller doesn't want it being presented in person. You can really push for that if you wanted to, right? Show us how aggressive you are, first of all. But if that doesn't work, there was um, something that I've been thinking about for a while now. Uh, a lot of buyers, uh, agents that work with um, buyers that have a story, they, they write a letter and they put a picture of the family in the letter and, and they have it really personalized from the family. You should go one step further and have them come in one day and have um, Danny record them explaining their story in person with their kids and tell them to bring some 
uh, snippets of videos they have on their on their cell phones. So you could just throw in some B-roll while they're talking about like them playing in the park or you know them looking for a house or anything. Make a short 30 second to 60 second video that you can send along with your offer because I can guarantee you if they see that video, it'll it'll go a lot further than than a letter that they, that they probably won't read. You know, so stand out, be different, give them an advantage. You know, you don't want to waste your time either. If you're running around with a buyer that only qualifies for a certain amount of money, there's a limited resource and you're making less money, you have to find ways in which you're going to stand out and hopefully get that offer accepted quicker. You know, and tell your clients, listen, don't be shy. You know, this is, we're talking about the, the rest of, you know, your life. If this is your forever home, you know, what kind of a house do you want to end up with? If you, if you don't, if you think, you know, you're too uncomfortable to sit in front of a camera for a few minutes, then you're really not serious about buying a house. So, you know, I'm, I'm working, I want you to quote, do your part as well. So see if they can come in and do that. Even with your good buyers, let's just say you have a good buyer in a 300 range, 500 range, 700 range, whatever it is, show them how you guys are different and show them how you guys can really represent them and better than any other real estate agent by having them do this quick video. Come in, do a short video, a short video and then have that as your arsenal when you present your offer with the pre-approval letter, with the video and then they're going to see that wow, your clients are, are really there's a person behind the offer and that's what people want to know you know yeah any suggestions or, or any comments on that any questions other questions other questions that was a good question Anna that was good because people sometimes are on those limited budgets and you got to figure out creative ways to get them accepted anyone else come on Derek I know you've been working on this for a while now you've got to have you got to stumped on something um, I have questions like every day. The one time you, you ask for a question, I you're, don't. I'm you're blank. To a <laughs> Let me see if I can spark a question for you. How was your open house this weekend? It wasn't bad. We got like, you know, like three groups of people, three, four, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't like fantastic. Yeah. But hopefully, oh. we have like one person that we think was like interested. They went around the house a couple times. They yeah. went outside into the back. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, other than that, it wasn't anything, anything super special, mm -hmm. I guess. Okay. What kind of questions did you ask that person who you thought was very um, interested? Uh, do you guys have a follow-up plan? Well, I mean, really just going to be calling mm -hmm. maybe back today or tomorrow and see if they're interested in submitting an offer or anything. If and if not, if they're looking in the area, or what right. they're looking for. For anything else? Yeah. Okay. What are you going to go ahead, Tom? Uh, when you call back, talk about the house a little bit. Have it planned. Mm -hmm. You know, and you, you say something like this We met yesterday at my open house at such and such. The homeowners requested that I call everyone back to see if anybody has any interest in it. I noticed you spent some time there, blah, blah, blah. Would you have any interest in the house? And, go, and then start it from there. And then try to get the appointment to see if <coughs> But have a plan. Have a plan for for calling back. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, are those the kind of people that you're going to throw into your conversion um, follow-up system, and then you're also going to call them as well? Or what are you going to do with them? You're more personalized with them. Um, well, I mean, if they're not interested in that specific house, mm -hmm. then I'll probably put them in conversion. Okay. And kind of send them some things in that area, I guess. If okay. they're looking there, if not, then wherever they're looking. Okay, so let's just say that I'm that buyer and, I, and you call me and I'm like, oh, Derek, I don't know, something about that house, I'm not sure, it's a little old, dated, whatever, you know, um, not really interested, I think I'm going to have to pass. What would you say? Probably okay, and then if, are you looking in that area or what are you looking for specifically? Mm, yeah, Bloomfield, you know, uh, Glen Ridge, that's my area, that's where I want to be, uh, you know, so, you know, I'm going to keep looking and, and, and uh, hopefully I find the right house for me. What would okay. you say? Uh, well, then maybe we can help you find something in that area. What's your price range? Mm -hmm. No, roughly about five hundred thousand. That's my max. That's your max? Yeah, about five hundred thousand. Okay. Do you mind if I get your email? I can send you some things in the area. Sure. Go ahead. It's John at one two three dot com. You got to you got to excite me when you call me. Mm -hmm. You got to tell me. Listen, yeah. there there's there's houses coming out every day, and uh, myself as a real estate agent, I find out about these homes first. There's a few that I know that are coming up. Can we schedule an appointment for this weekend? I'll take you out to see some stuff. What's up? That's the key right there. Start with, with when he's not interested in this one, say, we have others. Mm -hmm. Start with, we have others. We know of other homes similar to that I could show you. Mm -hmm. You're interested in seeing other houses. Try to get an appointment. 
Yeah. Set the appointment up, Tom. Listen, it, I, there's some great stuff coming up this week. I got a few phone calls from some brokers that told me about uh, some properties they're putting up. We're working on some. We can also prospect the area for you. If they're a good client, if they're a $500,000 client, I'd prospect the area for them. Now, when you call that area, you really do have a buyer. And when people tell you, bring me a buyer, guess what? You have the buyer. You don't have to dress up Carlos as a buyer and, <laughs> and bring him around. <laughs> So, I mean, that's an idea for you, you know, uh, try, try that approach. I think that, that would definitely work. Right. Yeah, man. Um, so, um, give me one second. I'm good. I'm terrible, but I'm good. Hold on. It's Monday. I'm trying to remember his name. <laughs> Gio. Gio. No. G no, is it Gio? Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. she called Leo. you something else the other day. Leo. 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 Oh, Gio. A, yeah. yeah. Gio, uh, you're coming in as um, as a marketing expert, right? Like, um, so, do you have any questions as far as like how real estate and marketing uh, work? How is it different from any other industry that you've ever been in? Um, I just researched a little bit about it. Just um, most of your buyers are always online, they're only digital, trying to buy using apps. Mm -hmm. um, how effective is you know cold calling rather than you know, mm -hmm. them coming to you? Okay. Uh, I'll let someone else take this. Uh, who's been called? You guys call call a lot, right? Um, yeah, yeah. You guys, why don't you guys take this this question? How does cold calling differentiate from marketing? Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, cold calling, in my opinion, is, is like is like gold. Marketing is like a good supplement. I feel like if you don't have, you do much better with both as opposed to just one. Right. But do you find it better messaging on like on messenger on Facebook or calling them? Calling. Calling. Calling yeah, and calling. I think calling is definitely much better. Exactly. You actually like interact with the person as opposed. You can't, like you said, like you have to excite the person. Mm -hmm. You can't do that over a text message. Right. Or it's very hard to do it over a text message. Mm -hmm. And it, it's definitely good to have both, though. That's definitely, I think, best to have the marketing and the cold calling. Okay. Do you guys have a script for yeah. cold calling? Or is it oh, yeah. Often? Yeah. Okay. Dozens of them. Yeah. Okay. Just ask them. Yeah. What do you think, Rock? You've been you've been making some calls. I think uh, I think cold calling is definitely beneficial, especially talking with someone on the phone. It's like as close to face to face as you can get. Right. I think uh, I think it's definitely more beneficial than texting or emailing or anything like that. I think calling is definitely more beneficial, for sure. Eric, I sent you an invitation. It might come up on your phone. Uh, if you want to see the, if you, in case you want to see the screen that we uh, have up, if it's too far from you. Okay, uh, well, when it comes to prospecting and marketing, you can't have one without the other. It's like, you know, it's, it's a, being successful in real estate is a whole formula, and if you're missing one component, you're, you're not gonna get the desired result. Prospecting is, is vital because it's like going hunting, you know, like either you can wait for your food to be delivered to you or you can go out there and get it. So think of it that way. So you gotta prospect, that's crucial. Any real estate agent that's scared to prospect, is not meant for the business. You have to prospect. It's just like anything. Um, and, but then with marketing, what happens is that marketing is, is considered to be, in my opinion, leverage. So leverage means that it's working when you're sleeping. So for me, if I don't market, no one's ever going to know about culture state. No one's ever going to know about what we're up to. No one's ever going to know that we even exist. So you have to do both. They're crucial. Mm -hmm. So you can't have one element, one not the other. So one isn't better than the other. Some people make a living 90% off marketing, 10% off prospecting. Some people do vice versa. But it depends what kind of person you are. And you should always do both. And if you're not good at marketing, do exactly what Lim is doing. Hire an expert to come in and, and supplement that part of it. If you're young and you're able to pick things up quick, then you got to immerse yourself in both. And you got to figure out, you know, how much time you spend on this, how much time you spend on that. And then as you get busier and busier, you get people to help you with that stuff. You get a team member to help you prospect, you get a team member to help you with marketing, and then you just focus where you're good at. Maybe you're really good at listing appointments, or maybe you're really good at closing buyers. You know, what, whatever it is that makes the most money, then that's what you focus on. Tom? Yeah, that's basically what I was going to say. Evaluate everything you do. Evaluate, count these cold calls. How many do you make? What do you get out of 100 calls, etc.? Mm -hmm. If I call 200 people and I get nothing but hang-ups, what's wrong? You're not doing it right. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Probably you're not doing it right. But whatever you do in the business, evaluate your results all the time. Don't just split it up. A lot of, a lot of new people, young people come in this business and, and they get one lead and then they get one, say they get one sale. And they sit around for a month 
waiting for that to close. And they don't evaluate what they've done to get it, and they don't try to get others. You guys, this is a continuous process if you're going to be in it. It's not just to work a little bit and then stop so Exactly. That's good. Uh, yeah, so that's a good question, Gio. Um, you know, marketing is uh, it's an art. You know, you, uh, you, anyone could put up a Facebook ad and, and, and boost it, but it's more effective when you know what the parameters are and what you should be and where you should be putting it into who you should be putting it out. So um, yeah, that, that's it's all marketing is not just like sending out flyers. You know, you got to do your research and see what really works for your area, for your demographic. Morning, Scott. How are you, buddy? I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to invite you into our presentation. In case you have a question. Can I add something? Oh, yeah, go ahead, Dan. Of course. Um, as a marketing guy, right, from what I've seen, I've been here almost a year, uh, no one's really walked into the office and said, hey, I need a realtor for my house, or I'm looking to buy, I'm looking to sell, right? No, one, no one's done that yet, right? So, um, with cold calling, that's probably like our most effective weapon that we have here as far as getting work, as far as, um, you know, getting clients, right? Um, so my job here is kind of um, like brand exposure because um, in the beginning no one really knew about culture today. Now we're those guys that do the videos and now people are trying to copy us. So uh, it's very flattering. But um, hopefully one day we'll get to that point where people are, are, are like very um, aware of us and, and, and we're on that level of Waker, right, and whoever else, Remax, whoever else. That's done through marketing. Um, so cold calling is, um, I guess, how we connect with the people out there. Yeah. Tom? Cold calling is very effective. And one reason it's very effective, I, I, from experience, I know the big companies don't do a lot of this. Mm -hmm. they, they, they already got, everybody knows who we are. And, yeah. You know, they don't do a lot of this, and that's the reason that you should be doing it. Because, uh, hey, you know, somebody, uh, I'll use Wiker as an example. They list a house down the street here. Do you think that that agent's going to call the neighborhood to let people know that it's on the market or to let people know we're looking for buyers? So they don't do it. Probably not. They don't. They mm -hmm. just they, hey, they just stick their sign up. They do their ad, and, and everybody knows the company. And we can't we can't do it that way. But the most effective, I, I think, and I've said this to you before. I think the most effective thing you do here is the cold calling. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. And I wanted to suggest to you guys too that everyone's prospecting um, expires, everyone's prospecting list pendants. But think about this, why don't you get the phone numbers to everybody in a two block radius of this office, you know, and just call them. Because it, sh it shames me that there's houses on the same block here that goes with other, they go with other real estate companies. You know, when we're the top rated agency in, um, in Scotch Plains, if you look on Google, we're, well, as of Friday, as of Friday, we're five stars, some, some guy gave us a, a one star rating because I think like three different people from the office prospected him and he got mad. So I'm trying to dispute it right now. So, but yeah, we're, we're, we're everyone is, is um, giving us a good rate of review so far. So, you know, just use that as to your advantage. You know, we're, we're local, we're, you know, we're, we're new and we're different. So, you know, prospect this area. If, if we get a bigger stronghold in the Scotch Plains, it's over because we're already known as it is. And then if we get known locally with the people who live in this area, it, it's really a, it's a game changer. Okay, um, anyone else with a question? Come on, Erica, I'm going to pick on you. Give me a question, give me a question. <laughs> okay. How about you, Scott? You got a good one for me? Not yet. Not yet? Let me see if I can spark one up. Okay. Um, who, here, uh, who here has a 2018 uh, uh, production goal? No one? Everybody just wants to <laughs> run to the mill? Somebody has to come on. Somebody has to volunteer for this. Who has a who has a production goal, or a units goal, money goal, whatever that is? What is this guy? Sell a house a month. One closing a month. Twelve closings a year. Okay. It doesn't matter. Closing is a closing, right? That's good. Okay. So, um, what what have you uh, formulated that would equate to one closing a, a, a deal? And because you know, um, not every deal closes. Obviously, we all know that and not every client converts. So there's gotta be an X amount of people to X amount of contracts, to X amount of closings. So have you, have you come up with a ratio or have you uh, thought about what that means in order for you to do that? I'm still playing with it, but I'm hoping for at least five listings a month. Mm -hmm. So that'll give me around. How many appointments? 
How many? Yeah, before. Yeah, because it all stems from that. Because let's look at it this way: five five listens a month, right? Right. How many appointments is that, right? In the beginning, maybe you would do a 50-50 ratio because you're not that good and you don't know what to say. You don't know how to close, right? Mm -hmm. So how many phone calls is that? How many phone calls do you need to make to get one listing appointment, right? And on average, once you get good, probably every hundred phone calls that you make, you'll probably get a listing appointment, right? It, it, that's yeah. the thing. You set the goal. That's a small part of it. That's a, at least that's a plan. But the big part of the plan is how am I going to do this? I set the goal. Right. How am I going to do it? Can you unplug the charger? And you gotta have that part of it too. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, Tom touched on that briefly earlier. You gotta keep your you gotta you gotta track your numbers. Because if your goal for the year is to do 12 closings or a closing a month, right, you have to figure out, okay, how are those closings going to come to me? Are they going to be all listings? Are they going to be listings, a mix of listing and buyers? And, okay, so break that down, right? We have our listings on one side, our buyers on the other side. How many buyers do I have to work with in order for them to actually make a decision, make an offer, get that offer accepted, and get that offer to go through? It's all a numbers game. So uh, on one side of your page or on one side of your column, you can do buyers. On the other side, you could do listings, right? And on listings, how many, list, how many phone calls do I got to make? to get one listing appointment, and how many of those listing appointments can I close? So how many do I really need in order to uh, fulfill my, my goal for that year? And remember, some of those deals are gonna die on both sides. So I would say, if you really have a goal for this year, start with that. Start with how many phone calls, how many prospecting phone calls do I gotta make? How many buyers do I have to um, uh, pre-qualify, not only uh, uh, financially, but emotionally? Um, that, that's going to lead me to my next my next topic for you guys to, to chat about. But um, how many people here have taken the time to say, okay, this is what I have to actually do to get one listing? Close, you have. Okay, what have you come up with? You've been prospecting like crazy. How can you can you can you already make a kind of a, a can you quantify the numbers to see how how many calls you have to make to get one listing appointment yet? Honestly, no. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when we with that Rene guy, and mm -hmm. we gave us that breakdown, 60% yeah. or whatever it yeah. was. I used that. Mm -hmm. uh, got guide, it's kind of like funneled it down to yeah. what you want. Yeah. Um, that was really good, what he said. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was using that. Um, I should take note of it here. So what Carlos is saying is that we went to, um, we went to a, uh, a, what was that, like a little kind of presentation yeah. that this guy did? Um, uh, he's a he's a he's a motivational speaker, but he was talking. He's he's expert in real estate. So what he said was that the more prospecting calls you make, right? Obviously, the more successful you're going to be. But every one of those phone calls, whether you get the listing or you don't get the listing, have a value attached to it. Because let's just say for every hundred phone calls you make, you get one listing appointment or one listing. Let's say that means that the other 99 had a value as well, and you couldn't get gotten to that one without getting past the 99. So as you're getting hang-ups, as you're getting cursed at, each one of those has a value. What value that is depends on what kind of uh, listing volume you're doing and what kind of price point you're at. So let's just say the house is going to bring you a $10,000 commission, right? That means that you divide that by 100 phone calls. What is that, like uh, $100 a phone call, right? Something like that. So you got $100 a phone call, right? Every phone call you make, that means you're making $100. So think of it that way as opposed to saying, oh, man, I'm never going to get this damn listing. Just keep making the calls because they all have a value. Whether you think about it or not, it's, it's there. You know, and then once you do get that one person who says yes, that one person who said yes, it's still worth $100 if you really think about it because it was just the person who said yes. What's up? If you're going to make it worth $100, you have to have dialogues and know what you're going to yeah. say. You just can't. You cannot wing this stuff. No. There's no way. you got to know what you're going to say. You know, you have it on a sheet of paper right in front of you while you're making the calls. Yeah. You know, but you got to use the dialogues. Eventually, you can make those phone calls worth more money, you know, 150, 200. But I'm sorry, Carl, if I cut you off. Continue. You sure? You want to add to, add to that? That was actually a really good point that you were saying. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much do that with like anything. Uh, kind of your end goal and just how you get there. You use like the funnel formula that you talked about. Yeah. So, can you explain the funnel the formula a little more? Um, how, that, how that works or the, or the thought behind it? I mean, I have here how, like the hours you call per day, how many phone calls you can make per hour. Um, 
actually how many people you can speak with, you know, within those hours, and then out of those, like how many like listening points you you get, which turn into the audience presentations, and then from those presentations that you make, how many of them turn into listing uh, listings? So. And then from all those listings, how many actually turn into uh, a sale? Yeah. So what you're saying is the funnel works originally with the time you you put into it, right? Of course. Let me see when this thing decides to not freeze. I'll, I'll, I'll put it into. Okay, so who can get that visual without me typing it in because it froze on me? Uh, how many hours, right? That's where you start at. And then from hours is how many phone calls can you make in that hour? And how, uh, you, what's your conversion rate? And then right? from there, how many people actually talk to? Okay, how many people you speak to? And then how many of those people actually give you the listing appointment? The appointment. How many then, people can you close? Yeah. Right? At those listing appointments? And then how many and then how many of those really sales. and how many really close, yeah, yeah. right? It's how many what you put in the top of that funnel, what comes it's out the bottom. Yeah, exactly. that's what it is. Yeah, that's that's a really good uh So that's what I kinda of do. I mean yeah. that's like any goal I may have. Yeah, it's true. So at the end of the day what you're basically saying is it's a numbers. It's, it's just a numbers. numbers game. It's all it is is a numbers game. It's like anything else. Morning Paul. Morning Harry. How you doing bud? Anyone come up with one last question? We got time for one more. Don't be shy. Harry's not shy. You got a question or something we can uh, converse with about for a minute? Uh, I have no idea what I walked into. That's okay. We're doing Q&A until 9.30. So if you've had any questions that you've been um, pondering or things that you want more uh, insight on, anything like that, same thing with you, Paul. Any, any subjects? Yeah, or you guys just want to wait till later until I'm in the middle of like 10 things and you can call me and be like, hey, can I ask you this question real quick? <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's usually how it works. <laughs> No, I'm joking. Um, anyone else too? I mean, it's if you. a little bit of truth. Sorry. I'm <laughs> joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm not. But. We did talk about on uh, Friday or Saturday. We were talking about like if somebody says that they uh, are looking for a buyer, mm -hmm. like coming up with a really good response. Um, yeah. Because I mean, typically, like most of the calls I'm making, it's um, you know, yeah, you you know, I'll I'll pay you commission, but just, you do have a buyer. Do you have a buyer? Bring me a buyer. And it's bring me a buyer and. And then usually it's like, well, you know, I don't have a buyer right now, but I'll, you know, I'll find you a buyer, sure. and then they just don't want to deal with me anymore. Right. There's got to be a way to like, kind of combat that and get in the door still. Yeah. Right, Tom. We work with a lot of buyers. Yeah, I mean, I said I say all that. It's a little. Okay. Well, then they're not ready to list. But yeah, yeah. Saying. Well, if not, they want to sell. Like even some of them are for sale yeah. by owners. What are they trying to do? They're trying to save commission. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you talk about money. Well, if I could show you how we can get you more money for your house than you can get by selling it yourself, would you be interested in talking about that? No. They'll say, well, how are you going to do that? Well, 95% of the people that buy a house buy through a realtor and start that angle. Yeah. We've got 95% we got of the buyers, don't you think? Some of them are not going to hear it. Some of them are not going to hear it. They don't want to hear it, they're going to save the commission. So it, it, this is like a FISBO. This is like a FISBO. Remember we talked about the stages of FISBO, wasn't it? Yeah. If they're in stage one, you can't do anything with They just got to keep following up. Yeah. Because they, they just had, they just had a, a number call come through that I didn't realize it was Rocco's deal on Lewis's already. They had went there months ago, and now she's ready now. Well, yeah, of course, like she went from stage one to three or four. <laughs> so, like, for me, for, me, the bed. for me, it goes back to like what Carlos was talking about. It's just a number game. I just yeah. need to keep continue getting in front of houses. If I if I don't get the listing, it doesn't matter. I just keep putting in the work, and some yeah. are going to come through. Some are going to tell me, "Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you." And you just keep you just keep putting in the numbers, and it's just going to pay off. And the ones that didn't follow up. Just if, it's going, don't lose any momentum. If I was still, if I was still um, uh, selling real estate, what I would do with for sale by owners, I'd have a whole process to it. Is I would I would visit them because there's gonna be no harm in visiting the home. You know, if they say, do you have a buyer, and you tell them, you know what, maybe I do, maybe I don't. In my process with for sale by owners, yeah. since I don't have anything to base it off of, I just preview the house first. I'm not, I don't want to list your home. Obviously, I don't want to waste your time. I just want to preview the home. Look at the house. And then have your own customized drip campaign for for sale by owners, something that you guys put together yourselves with video, with pictures, with everything. So that way, even when you're not thinking of them, the system is always constantly emailing them and, 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 uh, yeah. and texting them. Right. And then manually, maybe like in two months time, just give them a quick call. Yeah, that's the one thing. That's all you need I to do. On, uh, Friday was I didn't get their email address. Yeah. Because like, I was... 
was like, well, listen, you know, when you're interested, you know, take my information. But I should have got their email, so they yeah. said I could then, you know, put them in that trip campaign and could constantly see what you, you know, do. Mm -hmm. You know, an email coming through sure. and remind them because mm -hmm. they're going to probably get you know, a thousand calls. Of well. course, that's all you guys need to do. Don't I mean, don't be overly, um, I guess, aggressive with them because they're not ready. They like Tom said, they gotta, they gotta it's realize that it's not as easy as they thought it was going to be. So um, that's what I would do with for sale by owners. Tom? One more thing about for sale by owners for new people. You remember we talked about gut gauges? Remember that? Yeah. You got to get the guts to walk up or knock on the door to start with. A lot of people won't do that. Mm -hmm. They just won't do it. And until you do, you're not going to get anything out of it at all. I went from a guy the other day on the phone that said, uh, I'm not cooperating with any realtors. By the time I'm on the phone, I'm Telling them off, I'll send one of my guys over to get the paperwork signed to listen. It's just positive mm -hmm. energy, mm -hmm. too. Don't take anything they say personal. Because I used to get frustrated, too, and I'm just be like, hey, you know what, have a great day, click. Mm -hmm. Instead of understanding that they probably had a bad experience with a realtor. Yeah, <laughs> and you've got to show them why you're different. Mm -hmm. And you've got to get that energy across that you are different and you, and you really do care. And um, if you don't get it, yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. Okay, uh, well, that's that's uh, all the time we got for for Q and A this morning.